Hi everyone, I'm Gina Kay from Gina Kay Designs and your host of Stamp TV. Today on Stamp TV, I'm going to show you a fun background technique that I discovered by accident. Let me show you the tools and products you're going to need to make this card project. First, you're going to need some ink, and the ink pads that I'm using today are the Gina Kay Designs Charcoal Brown, the Craft, and the Ivory Pigment Ink. Then you're going to need an embossing folder, and I'm using the Darius embossing folder, and this one is called Vine. Then you're going to need some cardstock, and I've cut a piece of cardstock down to three and a half inches by four and three quarter inches, and this is our layering weight ivory cardstock. Along with the cardstock, you're going to need a score buddy or some sort of scoring device that can score on half inch marks. And then I'll show you the stamps that I'm using, that I used for my card, and, um, and the dies as well when I assemble the card. So to begin doing this technique, you want to start with this piece of cardstock, and you want to start on the side that measures three and a half inches. And you want to take your score tool, and you want to score on every half inch mark. I like to have nice deep score lines for this. And then when I get kind of close to where my fingers are, I like to turn the piece around and finish it up the other way, just so I don't run over my nails. And you'll have to excuse my hands today, I am covered with ink. I've been stamping all day and I'm just covered with ink. Okay, so now we have these score lines. Now there are two sides, the one side the score lines stick out, and the other ones they are kind of going inward like an impression, it made an impression. This is the side that we're going to use. Okay, so now I'm going to grab a piece of plain copy paper to work on and I'm going to start with my craft ink pad. And I'm going to do long swiping motions down this piece of cardstock. And as you can see, as I do that, everywhere that there is an impression where the score lines are, no ink is hitting that area. And this is giving me kind of a wood grained look and it's looking like planks of wood. So now we've got some nice craft ink on there. Now we're going to go on top of that craft ink with some of the Gina K Designs Charcoal Brown. And we're going to make it nice and dark. And don't worry about getting it too dark. Okay. So there. Now that almost looks black, but it's not. It is a very dark brown, and it will lighten up a little bit when we get to the next step. So now, my next step is going to be to choose an embossing folder. And the one that I've chosen to use today is the Vine Embossing Folder by Darice. Now, embossing folders usually have two parts. They'll have one part that has a deep impression of a design, and then there is usually a thin impression that will press down into the depression lines here and create a recessed look. Or, if you do it this way, your design will protrude forward. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure that I have the thin lines. And on this particular folder, that means that the logo is facing my table. And I want to actually make an impression with this design. So I want the lines to press in to this particular piece of wood grained paper. So I'm going to use my cuddle bug for this. You can use your little sister. You can use any embossing machine or die cutting machine you have. I'm using a B plate and well an A and a B and then my embossing folder with the logo side down and then a B plate on top. Now this is where the accident happened. So I ran this through and I don't know what I expected but I expected something absolutely fantastic. Let me run it through again. You don't have to but I just really want to make sure it's in there. So I was so excited to see something spectacular. I thought this is going to be amazing and when I opened it up I didn't see anything. 
So I was getting ready to throw it away, and I thought, no, wait, before I throw it away, let me try one more thing. And this was the invention of my technique that I'm calling carved wood. So I grabbed an ivory pigment ink pad, and then, here's where the magic happens, then I just ran it down, not too heavy, lightly, over the surface. And you see how all that, all, it looks like carvings are in this piece of wood-grained cardstock. Isn't that just the coolest thing? That is so fun. And it looks so much like just aged wood that has beautiful carvings in it. So that is how you do the carved wood technique. So now I'm going to assemble this into a card. So let me grab a few things here. I have a piece of dark chocolate cardstock, and then I have an ivory card base. And then the stamps that I used for this are the stamps from the Give Thanks stamp set. This is from the new Stamp TV kit, the Painted Autumn kit. You can see what that looks like. The stamps that I used are the bear. I used that one. I used these leaves, and I used some pumpkins. So I pre-stamped all of these and colored them because I wanted to focus more on the technique. And then I cut them out with the set of dies that comes in the kit. So this is what they look like. I did two pumpkins. Here's the other one, and I cut those out. And then here is the little bear, and I gave him a little turquoise scarf. And then I had a few leaves here. I did, let's see, I did two three of the small ones, two of the large ones. And then the final piece that I did was I stamped the words give thanks on some ivory cardstock, and then I cut it out using this Cottage Cuts double stitched circle die. So you can use any circle die, and I know that we have a lot of circle dies in our online store that you guys might already have in your collection, so you don't need to use a double stitch die. I just was trying it out because I possibly may want to carry these in our store, and, um, and I really liked it, but if you use just a regular circle and maybe do that little beaded edge that a lot of you like to do with the inverted scallop circles and the regular circle dies, you can do that as well, and that would look really cool. So I stamped two of them. I went a little heavier with the ink on that one, so I'm going to use that one. And then I have a piece of double-stitched black ribbon here. So to assemble this card, and you can see all the beautiful embossing work that that embossing folder does. So that's a real nice folder to have in your collection. We do now have this embossing folder along with a series of other folders that works really well with this technique. The ones I stocked in our store, in our online store, I chose based on this technique because I thought it was so much fun to do and it looked so, so rich and elegant. So I mounted that onto a piece of dark chocolate, and then I'm going to cut this brown ribbon. You can use any kind of ribbon. Cut that piece of brown ribbon and just put it right there in the center, maybe a little up from center. And then this whole panel is going to go onto my ivory card base. And you can see this is a little smaller than my usual panel that I do, but I needed it to be a little bit smaller because I wanted to do all half inch score lines. And my usual size is three and three quarter inches by five, and that th those three and three quarter inches didn't allow for those half inch score lines. So I just made it a little smaller. And I like it. It gives you a nice big wide frame around the outside in ivory, so that's kind of fun. All right, so there is my card base. Now for the greeting, I'm going to I'm going to lay this all out first. And I saw that uh, one of our design team members, Sherry Gilson, did this similar layout, and I just loved it, so I thought I would do it on a card too. So I am borrowing inspiration from her. Okay, so I'm going to have pumpkins behind him and then pumpkins in front of him kind of off to the side there. Then I'm going to have, let's see, one leaf here. 
And then another leaf coming off there. And then I'm going to have a big leaf coming off down here. And then two little ones coming up behind these pumpkins like that. So the whole thing can be a little bit off center like that. And I'm going to assemble those. I'm going to pull off my first couple layers here. The first things I want to do are these. So I'm going to tape those directly onto my card base. Like that. And then these two are going to go right on my card base. Actually, I can pop that up too if I wanted to. But it's up to you how you want it to look. It's probably a good idea to let your um, your pigment ink dry first too because that is a little bit wet still and that might be giving me some trouble getting this stuff to stick. But let's just keep going with it. Okay. And then we're going to stick this directly down right about here. And that's in the center. Like that. Maybe a little over. I'm trying to get it between those two planks. The wood planks help a lot in getting things centered because they're all evenly spaced. That looks good. Okay. There we go. Now my next layer is going to be the pumpkins back here. So I'll put that right here. And then the bear, I'm going to pop him up. with some foam squares. I'll put him about here. Put that off of there. And then I'm going to pump the, pop these pumpkins up over here, just on one side, and the other side I can tape directly onto him because he's already raised up, but I need to raise the one side up. So we'll do that right here. And then we'll add this last little leaf popped up right behind him. Like that. And that gives you all kinds of fun dimension for your card. And that nice carved wood background really, really plays off nicely with the fall theme. So there's my finished card project. I hope you've enjoyed today's Stamp TV technique video. Stay tuned to Stamp TV for more cards and techniques, and thanks so much for watching.